So then we want to be able to test the post routes in our application and we're going to be using a tool called Postman to do that. So Postman allows us to simulate requests to a server when we don't have a front end to do that for us. Like in our case, whereby we don't have any web forms yet to send the post requests. So we can use Postman instead to simulate those requests to our different endpoints. Now, ultimately, we're going to be making our sign up and login forms, which will send those post requests. But until we have those, we can use this to make them and test everything works as it should. So you can download this tool for free. You do need a free account to do that as well, but you can download it right here. So once you've downloaded it, go ahead and fire it up. You will probably need to sign up or log in if this is the first time you're using it. But once you've done that, you should see something like this. We want to create a new request and then we're going to see this screen. So this is how we simulate requests to our server. So this right here is the request URL. So for example, I could paste in localhost port 3000 and that is going to send a request to this address right here. Now, this is the type of request, get request, post, etc. We're just going to send a get request and to do that, we click on send. So we then handle this on the server, much like if a browser made this request. Now, when a browser makes this request, we can see in the code, if we go to app.js, it handles it right here just forward slash and it sends the home view. So it creates that HTML based on this view and sends it to the browser. Now, obviously this is not a browser, so we're not gonna see that web page right here, but what we will get back is the raw HTML and we'll see that as the response instead. So let's give this a whirl, press send, and we can see all of that HTML down here for the home page. Okay, so let's try now something like forward slash sign up and press send and we get the sign up page instead down here. Now, what we want to do is test the post requests as well. So we can change the type over here from get to post. Now, at the minute, we're sending this to forward slash sign up. So let's have a look inside the code. What happens when we do that? If we go to the auth controller, this is the handler for that URL and a post request. So all we're doing is sending this text back. So that should be the response that we see, new sign up. So post and this route, let's press send and we see new sign up down here. So that works. Now we can do the same for login and this should send back some more text, user login. That's this thing right here. So these route handlers are working. Now, typically when we send a post request from a browser, it's normally after a user has submitted some kind of form. So they've entered in maybe an email and a password to either sign up or login. And then when they click on submit, a post request is sent to the server, but we also send with that post request the data that they entered into the form, the email and the password. Now we can simulate sending data as well from Postman and to do that inside a post request, all we need to do is go to the body and we wanna send some raw data and the type of data that we wanna send is gonna be JSON data. So say for example, I wanna send some JSON, which is gonna be an email and a password. I can do that. I'm gonna say the email will be mario at google.com and then also a password, which is gonna be test12, okay? So that's the data that I'm sending now. And if I click send, it's gonna send that data. We still get the same response. So we're doing that, but nothing different is happening. Really what we want to do is be able to grab this data on the server when it's sent to us inside the request handler. So inside here and inside here for the sign up request. So how do we do that? Well, there's two steps involved. First of all, we need to use the express JSON parser middleware. So let's go over to app.js. We don't need to import anything else. It comes along with express. And I'm gonna say down here, app.use because we're using some more middleware and then we want to use express.json. So what does this do? Well, basically it takes any JSON data that comes along with a request and it passes it into a JavaScript object for us so we can then use it inside the code. And it attaches that object with that data for us to the request object so we can access it in our request handlers. So if we send this request now to this endpoint, and this is the JSON data we're sending, then what happens is this takes that data and it passes it into a JavaScript object and it attaches it to the request object inside the handler for that route, which at the minute is this thing right here. 
So we can then access it from here by saying request.body. So I could just log this to the console, console.log right here, request.body, and that will show us the data that's sent. So if I was to send this right now, send, and it's taking a little longer than normal, but we want to then go over here and we want to see, oops, I think there's some kind of error. So let's take a look at what that is. It says console is not defined. Of course it's not. Let's spell this correctly, console, and then save it again. And then if we try to send this response, this request again, hopefully this will now work. And it says could not send request. Okay, third time's a charm. Send that request again. Okay, so we get the response. Now down here in the console, we should see the data, we do. So we have the email property and the password that we sent. So I could access both of those properties from the request body. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use some destructuring to do this. So const and then curly braces, we want the email and the password properties from request.body. So this is just simple destructuring. We're creating two variables, email and password, which is grabbing those properties from the request body, all right? So then down here, we'll just log those to the console again. So console.log, email and password. And in fact, I'm gonna do the same thing for this handler up here for the sign up post request. So those should both work now. Let me try this over here again. So we're still sending the same data at the minute. Let me change that just so we can see a difference in the console. So Luigi at google.com this time. So I'm gonna send this, again, this is going to forward slash login. So send it and we get the right response. And over here in the console, we're not logging anything yet. There it is. Okay, so Luigi at google.com and test one, two. So this works. Let's try sign up as well to make sure that works and press send. We get this response and we should see that data again. Yes, we do. So ultimately, we're gonna be sending all of these post requests from a browser after a user submits the forms. And when we do that, we're gonna be sending this data along with them. But until we have those forms on the front end, Postman is gonna be our friend and it's gonna help us to simulate these kinds of requests. So now we know that all of our route handlers are working and we know that we can test them as we go forward with Postman. Next up, we're gonna create a user model with Mongoose.